Good morning from the bus stop at Boardwalk Hotel. We are heading to Animal Kingdom today, if you couldn't tell by Michelle's amazing ears. We're gonna just kind of wing our day at Animal Kingdom. Go find the big kitties. Go find the big kitties. We have to find the big kitties. I mean, she's repping the big kitties, so. <laughs> had a late start today on purpose we did it on purpose it wasn't by accident we just needed to sleep I think that road trip we, we learned the the that, that that road trip we need a little bit extra sleep after that but other than that though we're we have uh, reservations at Tusker House at 11 and then we're gonna just kind of wing our day at Animal Kingdom as you can see we have gotten to Animal Kingdom and Michelle is wearing her amazing animal outfit <laughs> I love it my I love the fact that Michelle has amazing themed outfits to our vacation trip sometimes we match sometimes we don't and I love the fact that she doesn't expect me to do so but I like doing it anyway but animal kingdom here we come how are you, how are you doing today grace I'm well thank you ah, thank you and one of my favorite reveals of all the parks. Uh, I love coming up that nature trail, coming around that bend and seeing the tree of life. It is such a cool shot. I love it. They did a great job of kind of bringing you into the magic here at Animal Kingdom. If you ever want to find some of the more interesting items here in Animal Kingdom, we actually highly recommend the Mombasa Marketplace. Mombasa Marketplace is in Africa, just across from where you have the Tusker House entrance. And the Mombasa Marketplace actually carries a lot more of your uh, interesting pieces of merchandise. They have a lot more of the animal print stuff, a little bit more of the hard to find stuff. It's a little bit more diverse in the types of items you can find in here. And it's actually one of Michelle's shops that she always likes to check out. It's actually where she got the leggings that she's wearing today. So one of the things you can get here at the Animal Kingdom is these amazing tours. I am actually very interested in all four of these. Uh, we haven't done these yet. We, Like I talked about before, I love the behind the seeds tour over at, at, at Epcot in the Land Pavilion. And we have Caring for Giants, Up Close with the Rhinos, Savor the Savannah, and Wild Africa Trek. The Caring for Giants tour is $35 per person. It runs four times per day. Up Close with the Rhinos is one time per day, and it's $45. Save the Savannah is $115 per person. And then Wild Africa Trek is $215 per person. And that's the one that goes across the bridge that's on the Kilimanjaro Safari. And a big thank you to Reagan, the cast member, who helped gave me all that information to share with you. By the way, about those tours, I'm not kidding when I say that I actually have done a bunch of them. I actually find them to be fascinating and interesting. And I think you should check them out. They are really an awesome experience. Uh, the Behind the Seeds Tour is one of the cheapest tours on property. It's about the same price as that Caring for Giants Tour. So check them out. You, you're not going to pay a lot for some of the things that they offer, but you have to look into it. Now, Reagan did say that there will be sometimes walk-up availability, but she recommended booking it 60 days out just for your information. talk about something that makes Disney different from pretty much every other place you go in the world and it's how you interact with the people around not just talking cast members I'm not talking cast members always be nice to cast members I'm talking about when you're in places in Disney most people are in a good mood you can usually talk to them you can find out a lot about them you can meet people from all over the world all over the country and of different makes and models and everything that and every beliefs and Everyone seems to just get along here because Disney makes them happy. There's a couple. We met them on our first night at Magic Kingdom watching the Disney Enchantment fireworks. Jonathan and Christina were the nicest couple. We talked to them while we were waiting for the fireworks and then we watched the fireworks together and discussed it afterwards. They were the nicest couple. They just ran into Michelle while I was filming the musician you just saw and stopped to say that they saw her and that they were excited to see her again. And then I came back and talked to them for a little bit. So just think about this. If you, you can make 
Disney friends here. You, you, we may never see them again. And Jonathan, Christine, if you ever see this, I wish you well. I hope your vacation went great. I look forward to maybe running into you again on this vacation. Thanks for being awesome people. Thanks for stopping and talking to my wife. That really made my day. I appreciate you. And everybody else, just take the time to talk to people, find out about them, find out where they're from. It's an easy conversation. So we're here in Tusker House. We've been seated in, a, actually, I think this is the same room we ate in all those years ago. I think it was 12 years ago now. We've already seen Donald. And that was awesome. I, I got a hug from Donald and maybe we well, got a... <laughs> Michelle also got one. I'll throw in that picture here. So much fun. We we got Christmas server came over and then Donald came in and started dancing. The character environment here is awesome. But uh, just so you know, it is a prefix menu. It is family style. It's no longer a buffet. For those of you who remember it being a buffet, and uh, I'll throw the menu in. I definitely took I uh, put the QR code up so you can scan it and take a look. I did take a picture of it. So the. We're looking forward to this meal because it sounds way different from when we had it the last time. Move it, Daisy! Woo so you see, we have the bread service, we have uh, red pepper hummus, a mango chutney, and a chimichurri. Thank you very much, Chris. He came over and helped me out with yeast rolls. And then we have a salad with a like nice light vinaigrette and uh, we're looking forward to the appetizer part of our meal. How you doing, Goofy? Can I get a hug? Can I get a hug? Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> Goofy just came by and in my excitement, <laughs> I accidentally didn't turn the camera far enough to catch my interaction with him. Boo. <laughs> but Michelle got a picture. So, bread service and salad. Everything, in my opinion, was excellent. The, my favorite of the dipping sauces was the red pepper hummus. Michelle agrees. She says it's incredible, and I agree with her. It's just really good. Nothing was bad. I liked the chimichurri second, and then the mango chutney third, but nothing was bad. They were all excellent. The salad, I liked it. However, Michelle did not. She said that the, uh, the dressing was way too sour for her, and I can see where she's coming from, because when I tried it, I, I definitely picked that up. She, while we're waiting for our next course to come out, I want to show you that uh, one of the things that they give you right now is these uh, signature cards as like a little gift, as a little token for coming in. Now, I believe you can ask the characters to sign things, um, but I'm not 100% certain. So the rotisserie chicken, jasmine rice, Roast pork shoulder, mixed vegetables, Moroccan spice flank steak with the roasted potatoes and a green chimichurri, green coconut shrimp curry, and then our good old mac and cheese. Thank you, Chris. I didn't have to explain that because Chris is awesome. Thank you. So you. How's everything going? I, I, I can't tell you how much it meant to me to get a hug from you right now, and I'm not kidding. It really, really meant a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We, we, we love you here. <laughs> Thank you. So I've officially tried everything. First, I'm going to say that I probably shouldn't say this, but this mac and cheese is incredibly good. Um, no idea how creamy that and cheesy that is. It's excellent. Michelle loves mac and cheese, so she was like, she was like nodding emphatically just now when I said that. And um, I'm gonna say again that Chris, our server, is incredible. And you want Chris. We have, the, the chimichurri steak is probably, of the meats is probably my favorite. And the, here's the little tip. Michelle, does, it's, it comes out, it comes out rather pink, all right? And I like it that way, all right? If you can, hopefully you can see that on the camera, I'll bring it a little closer. So it comes out rather pink. Michelle doesn't like it that way. And all I had to do was ask. And they gave me uh, a much a, a darker cooking on it. And Michelle, what did you think of the steak? Did you like it? Oh, got a thumbs up. She thought it was excellent. So everything on this plate is good. The chicken is good. The pork is good. The vegetables are amazing. 
the jasmine rice. I had the lemon shrimp. Michelle won't have that, but um, of everything on the plate, I'd say the steak is my favorite, but everything is excellent. The spices are just at the right levels. You have, it's a good level of saltiness versus flavor. Everything about this plate is so good. This is a much better experience here at Tusker House food-wise than we had the last time we were here. Oh, one last thing. I added a Tusker House amber lager, um, and a safari amber. It is so good. I love this beer. Um, it's a great way to kind of uh, accompany the meal. It's nice and light and very refreshing, and it's not too heavy, and it's not too hoppy, so it's a good, like, medium like level beer, but it's it's a plus up because it's got a good it's got a very good brewing process on this one. Yeah, definitely one of my favorites here in Animal Kingdom. You can only get it here in Animal Kingdom. Daisy, oh thank you, that's very kind. Daisy, can I get a help? Yeah. I'm so happy to see you guys. By the way, when you came in here earlier, you were lost in the mood. I was impressed. I was impressed. <laughs> By the way, if you haven't noticed how good the character interaction is in here, uh, I think you're living under a rock. But I will tell you this, they are signing autographs. We just saw them do it into a, one of the autograph books, so they are definitely signing the autographs. Just letting you know. Michelle also got the African Margarita. She seems to really like it. She said it was really excellent flavor and the tequila wasn't too forward. It has, however, in it, Don Julio Blanco Tequila, Vanderham Tangerine Liqueur from South Africa, sweet and sour juice and fresh lime juice. And she says she loves it. She says they really made it well. This board has been in the room this whole time and it's really kind of fun because it tells you how to speak Swahili. Gina Long Uni Douglas, Nina Toka, Philadelphia. <laughs> I love this last one though. Tafadhali Wika Mikano Itani Itani Yayoni Marazote. Mickey Mouse cupcake, vanilla cupcake, buttercream frosting, dark chocolate ears. The next one we call the Tree of Life dessert. It's a caramel brownie with green tea ganache, cold coffee flakes, and a white meringue. Then the honeybee cake is a flowerless chocolate cake with a white chocolate honey filling. Now, they all sound great. So, of the three desserts, the vanilla cupcake is my least favorite, but it's not bad. It's just standard vanilla cupcake with frosting and Mickey ears on it, but it's still good because it's got Mickey ears on it. The, then I probably like the honey bee cake. It, it, you can definitely taste the honey in it, but it, does not, it doesn't really like blow me away. It was, it was nice and sweet and exactly what you want, but my favorite is definitely the caramel brownie. The caramel and the little bit of salt that they put into it, it's a very, very excellent flavor combination, and I definitely like the way that that chocolate brownie works with that caramel, the kind of the caramel infused into it. Very good. So, in general, I'm gonna say, this entire meal has been awesome. So much better from the last couple times that we were here. It, it was such a drastic difference from the last time that we'll definitely be coming back. Tusker House is now back on our list of places that we're willing to eat, and I'm really glad that we made the, 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 the change to come here. I hope the family style st stays. Michelle said exactly the same thing. She said that the family style made a huge difference. One, you get to interact with the characters. You don't have to worry about going to the buffet and coming back and missing a character. Thank you guys very, Thank very, you very much. Have a great time. Oh, today. Goofy, do you mind? Can I get another hug? Sorry, I love you. <laughs> By the way, one of the best parts about this place is the amazing staff. Thank you for being awesome. So this is Island Mercantile, and Island Mercantile is one of the two shops on Discovery Island. And Island Mercantile and uh, Discovery Trading Company on the other side of the way are two of my favorite shops actually in all of Walt Disney World, mainly because their selection is incredible. I mean, if you want it, they probably have it, and they also end up with stuff here that has gone off in other places. Like I one time found a baseball jersey that no one else had and I hadn't seen it anywhere and I found it at Discovery Trading Company and I ended up picking that one up. It was a really awesome older baseball jersey. It was gray and it says Walt Disney World. We'll probably put a picture in so you can see it. But I love Island Mercantile and Discovery Island Trading Company. I made a video talking about the things you shouldn't miss in Animal Kingdom and this is actually on the list because of that exact same reason. So Michelle's picking up this backpack, which is the Disneyland Main Street Electrical Parade. Here's the thing, it's still midday at Animal Kingdom and we don't want to carry 
all of this stuff with us. And one of the things we miss is the package pickup where they would take it to your resort. We were just told by a great cast member named Mark that if you pick up stuff in this store and it's only merchandise for this store here on Discovery Island, that they will hold it in stock for you so that you can not have to carry all that with you in the park. They'll give you a little yellow claim ticket and then you come back to the store at the end of your day and pick it up. So we're gonna utilize that because we really don't wanna carry stuff through the parks. And uh, Michelle, I'm sure agrees with that one. Yeah, she's like, no, I don't wanna carry this, it's hot. <laughs> As you can tell from our background, Michelle and I have gotten into the queue for Dinosaur. The time said 40 minutes. It's moved, this ride moves really fast. As you can tell, we're already moving ahead. And I don't think it's going to be more than, I don't think it's going to be more than 40 minutes. I think it's going to be closer to 20, if that. Because this ride loads quickly, loads a lot of people, and I think they overestimated but we'll find out. Just a little bit of a fun fact. You see that plaque there that's behind the cast member check-in station? It says the Dino Institute dedicated April 22nd, 1978, exploration, excavation, exaltation. And April 22nd, 1978 is Earth Day. And they use that date specifically because of that date. So I just thought that was kind of cool that they used that to, as the dedicated day for the Dino Institute. By the way, on Dinosaur, do not skip over these cases. These cases are not just props. They are actual fossils. They are actual pieces of, of real dinosaurs and the whole nine yards. It is actual museum quality pieces that they have on display here. So you might want to check these out as you're standing in line because there is no fakery going on right here. Hello there. Welcome to our little trans-dimensional joyride, folks. Fun fact here, I always like to give this one. Back when this was Countdown to Extinction, before it be called Dinosaur, those red, yellow, and white pipes have the chemical formulas for ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise on them because this ride used to be sponsored by McDonald's. And that was a nice little subtle nod to McDonald's in the ride. But again, those pipes, red, yellow, white, ketchup, mayonnaise, and mustard chemical formulas on them, which I think is a pretty fun little thing that they've left on, even though it's not sponsored by McDonald's anymore. We're about to get on the Time Rover. We're pretty close. Uh, two pre-show is where Disney counts off the time. So once you hit the pre-show, the clock stops, and we hit the pre-show at 20 minutes. So it was half the time that was on the screen and when we came to the line. So 20 minutes, half the time, just as I predicted. They were overestimating, I think, this time. But, yeah, I, I prefer them to overestimate than underestimate, though. This is Seeker. Listen up. We've got to get in, grab the Guadadon, and get out before the asteroid hits. Let's roll. Warning. Meteor shower in range. Just little one. Computer, full stop. Identify. Definitely not our dino. Go, go, go! That's it. Abort mission! Abort! Abort! Iguanodon. Forget it! Get them out now! They're not gonna make it! They're not gonna make it! You made it! I knew you would, and guess who made it back with you? That ride, always a lot of fun. Just for your information, the picture spot is the second to last Carnotaurus. So if you want to know what your picture looks like uh, for that ride, it is in the second to last Carnotaurus area. So just be prepared to understand that. In general, that ride is a lot of fun. Be careful, if you have long legs like me, be careful of the front wall. You might hit your knees a few times, so kind of, I kind of post myself so I don't have that. Michelle, you like that ride, right? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of fun every time. Yeah, I, it's, it's just a great ride. And um, you come out through this gift shop, but like I said, if you want that picture from the Carnotaurus part, it is the second to last sighting of the Carnotaurus that it comes up on, all right? But we're gonna move on to our next thing. This is Chester and Hester's Dinorama. It's a little store, and one of the things that people always say about Animal Kingdom is that they claim it's a boring park, and I disagree, mainly because the theming is incredible. For those who don't know the story of this land, basically they found 
bones in the area of this old gas station and they originally were running their own like museum of the pieces and then realized there was way more than they thought and then the Dino Institute comes to town and Chester and Hester decided to kind of capitalize on that and this is uh, the store outside of Chester and Hester's Dinorama and I love this store it's one of the best theme stores in all of Walt Disney World and it's just a lot of fun, and it has a lot of great merchandise in it too, so you should check this store out too. It's on the way out from Dinosaur as you come out through the exit. For those of you who don't know, Finding Nemo, The Big Blue and Beyond just reopened just recently, and as you can see, people are very excited about it because here's the end of the line. <laughs> and thank you, Jesse, I appreciate that. And the this show it has a massive following. Michelle and I decided to get in line for Everest. The sign says 30 minutes. This is actually one of my personal favorite rides in all of Walt Disney World. I love the thrill on it. I think that it is just perfect. Uh, I always ask for front row on this ride, mainly because in the front row, you get both sides of the thrill. You get the front row thrill, and you get the back row thrill as you start going backwards. This ro roller coaster does not invert like rock and roller coaster. It only goes forward and backwards, just so everyone understands. But it is probably the one of the most thrilling rides in all of Walt Disney World and Disco Yeti. Something you might notice is that in this fountain there's a whole bunch of coins like on the ground and in the fountain and people kind of uh, throw coins into these fountains. They also do it into the uh, fountains on rides sometimes. However, just so you know, Disney doesn't just collect the coins and keep them. They actually donate all of the coins to things like the Children's Miracle Network and other things like that. All the coins they collect are donated to some form of charity, which I think is awesome. Disney, you need more of these. Everest is not a hot line because of these. More of these in more rides, please. One of the cool things about this ride is they have this Yeti Museum in here as part of the queue. Really subtle way to create a queue with the switchbacks, but these cases have like evidence of the Yeti as you go through it. And I think it's actually a pretty cool little thing. It also has a lot of actual things that are from Asia and Tibet and area about like with the legend of the Yeti that are actually part of that legend, which I think is a pretty awesome part of this. It's not just theming for the ride, it's actual Tibetan belief. Oh, look, we both made the board. Yay. Lucky us. <laughs> We're about to get on, 20 minutes. So 10 minutes less than they advertised. I'll take that. Everest, we conquered the mountain. I uh, got a great 4K front row video of that. If you ever, by the way, if you wanna be in the front row, just ask nicely. They have a space reserved to the side for anybody who wants to wait for the front row. And if you're willing to wait, you can get front row and you can ride that ride. And I always say front row is the best for that one because you get both sides of the thrill. The thrill really got me this time though. The back, the going backwards, made me like involuntarily scream. How'd you feel about it? Did, 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 you don't get motion sick on that ride, do you? Uh, it depends, I'm okay this time. Okay this time. Yeah, you, you, it's like if you do multiple ridings, right? That's when you start having trouble? Yeah. Uh, that's what I thought. So those of you who get motion sick, there you go. Word from a person who gets motion sick. One time is okay. So a little Everest fun fact. As I start walking towards this shrine, you're gonna start noticing it starts lining up with the mountains behind it. That is intentional. I think that's a pretty cool piece of imagineering they did. One thing I want to point out to you though is a lot of people think that 
This is Everest. That is not Everest. That is actually the Forbidden Mountain. This is Everest. That's actually Everest, the one in the background there. But the Forbidden Mountain is the tall one, and that is where the ride happens, and then the actual Everest is right there. But that was a pretty cool little thing. But again, I love this little shrine that they have here as it matches up with the mountains behind it. Pretty cool, right? So Michelle and I stopped by the Festival of the Lion King bathrooms just because Michelle needed to use it, but I know that's a weird thing to talk about, but I want to tell you about a little interesting fact about the bathrooms in Animal Kingdom. The bathrooms in Animal Kingdom are the only bathrooms that are guest facing that have a lock on them, on the door. Because in case the animals get loose, you have the ability to barricade guests into the bathrooms and lock the door so they can't get in. I just thought that that's, it's an interesting little like thing that they thought of just because there are actually live animals here. So a little bit about the facts about the bathrooms at Disney World. Love you, Minnie Mickey. Love you, Pluto. And welcome to Kilimanjaro Safaris. Couldn't have said it better myself. We're, we're about to get on Kilimanjaro Safaris and uh, one of Michelle's favorite rides because she loves the animals. I love it too. Little tip, the last row is the best row. The last row has the best view. I'm gonna to try to show you what I mean by doing last row for the uh, for our safari. And remember, all you have to do is ask nicely. They say no, they say no. But last row is our favorite row. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So we're gonna try for last row. It says 20 minute wait. This ride moves relatively quickly if the animals don't get in the way. But we'll see what happens. And here's why we like the last row. Because we get all that view behind us as well as the view to our side. So that's why we recommend last row. Let's see how our safari driver does. Hello friends, my name is Rich and I'll be your safari guide through the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. To our left, we have some bongos. Bongos are the largest forest antelopes. They can get up to about 900 pounds. They are known as the ghosts of the forest because of their dark colors help them camouflage very well with their surroundings. Over here to our left side, right up next to that wall, we have a black rhino. Black rhinos can get up to about 3,000 pounds. It's gonna hit them straight down in the water there on that left side. A little baby one right up next to that one. As I, as I mentioned before, grayish blobs kind of moving through. As a reminder for everyone to remain seated at all times. They are among the most successful hunters in the wild. More successful than lions and cheetahs. He's hugging her. We do work with the other zoos around us to help uh, increase the population of uh, rhinos. A group of rhinoceros. And one of the phrases that we like to use here in Harambe is Kwaharini, which does mean to go well. So, Gus got off the safari. Um, we had a much better driver this time in Rich. He was great, uh, informative while being slightly funny and also being very observant. Um, also enunciated, that's, that's always good so we can understand everything he said. He was very good at not acknowledging the rhinos. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, he had to be very subtle and he was, he did a very good job. I, I, I applaud him on that. But yeah, that was a good safari that time. Uh, uh, we missed out on some creatures, like we didn't see any of the big cats, which made Michelle very upset, I'm sure, because she loves the big cats. But that was a good safari, yeah? Yeah, we saw a lot of, lot of animals. Not, not, not certain ones we wanted, but other than that, it was good. We do have a tip, though. Do the safari in the morning or in the evening. We did mid-afternoon just because that's when we ended up on it. That's not always the best time to go. Go early morning when you first get here or night, the last safaris that they put out. Look, there's one at 7.30 tonight. So Michelle and I are walking on the path from Africa to Pandora, and it should kind of show you how empty this park has gotten since park hopping started at two o'clock. So Animal Kingdom used to not be a full day park. We disagree. We actually think it is a full day park. We don't always spend as many days here as other parks, just because we feel we can get it done relatively quickly. However, it still is a full day park. There's so much you can do all day long. And now that Pandora's here and they light it up at night, you can actually have a good one. We're actually about to cross over to Pandora and all the wildlife is greeting us. You can hear it. And look, if you really want to be able to get on things here, 
if you missed the morning like we did, and we did it on purpose, because we wanted to sleep in, if you miss the morning, it's okay. Because generally in the afternoon, it starts dumping people. And eventually this park is rather empty, as you can see by the fact that there's hardly anybody on this path that we're taking between Africa and Pandora. So, just a little tip. Stick it around, don't park hop out, or park hop here, and you're gonna find that this park is way more empty than you think it's going to be. Michelle and I have stopped here at Pangu Pangu. We're gonna get some snacks. By the way, Pangu Pangu means party party in Navi, and I think it's kind of a fitting place and name for the what you can get here. You can get a lot of those uh, frozen beverages. You can get the Night Blossom, the Run Blossom, which is the alcoholic version of the Night Blossom, the Moara Margarita, and you also can get those specialty beers that you can't get anywhere else. You have the Moara High Country Ale, and you have the Hawks Grog Ale. And you can get both of those, and they're, the Hawks Grog Ale is actually green, and don't worry about it, it actually, they both taste really good. I prefer the Moara High Country over the Hawks Grog Ale. So here you can see the margarita that Michelle got with the boba balls. You can, they will op, give you the option to not have them if you don't like them, and that's my High Country Ale. I love this ale, it tastes really good. Michelle, what do you think of your uh, margarita? Yeah? Just pretty good. <laughs> it's not La Cava. It's not La Cava, but it'll cool you off, right? Yeah. <laughs> it'll cool you off though, right? Yeah. Michelle and I made a quick stop at No Man Lounge. We did get some nice outdoor seating. We really love this lounge. Their selection of drinks is bar none one of the best in the parks. And uh, we just also like just having a little moment to come sit and chill. And considering the fact that how hot it is today, we actually decided it was a good idea to actually stay outside just in case so that we can kind of get, stay acclimated to temperature and not constantly go in and out of cold, which actually can cause you more problems than not act in the long run, actually. And I've said actually a lot. I don't know why, but it's okay. We're at the Nomad Lounge and we're gonna have some fun. So Michelle, ordered the Pride Rainbow Cocktail. It does come with one of those really awesome glow lotus flowers, I guess that's what it is. And uh, it has absolute citron vodka, Parrot Bay coconut rum, Kurzlan Gym, pineapple juice, sour mix, Chambord, Splash or Sprite, Blue Curacao, and the Lotus Glow Cube. And I got myself the Tempting Tigress, which is basically their version of a old fashioned. Like I said, the Tempting Tigress is the Russell's Reserve 10-year bourbon, St. Elizabeth Allspice Dram, tamarind syrup, and lime juice, and Michelle's Rainbow Cocktail. She says it's pretty good, right? Very good, and I got my glow cube finally. <laughs> Very nice, awesome. So, Tempting Tigress and the Pride Cocktail at the Nomad Lounge. Michelle and I have actually decided we we're loving sitting here at the Nomad Lounge. I'm, I'm like totally reclined and having a great time. Michelle and I have decided to actually get some food. So we ordered the charcuterie board and their sliders. They're famous for the sliders. They come with yucca fries and their sliders are apparently very, very good. I've never had them. I've, they're famous for them. And the yucca fries are, they're, you know, yucca is a form of starchy food like potato, but it's not potato. And the, they, their yucca fries are apparently excellent. So we both ordered the sliders with the yucca fries and a charcuterie board to share. We decided that we're loving our time here at Nomad Lounge because it feels like we're just kind of chilling out today. And there's nothing wrong with having a chill out day in Walt Disney World, trust me. You'll have a mountain ham cheese, a venison sausage, a tasso ham, duck cruette, olive tapenade, fig tapenade, brie cheese, cheddar biscuit, pickled onions, and pickled mustard seeds. Y'all enjoy? Thank you, Alex. Thank you, just have the charcuterie board. I would have to say that my favorite thing on the charcuterie board was the cheddar cheese. It was really, really like nice and sharp with a good creamy flavor behind it. And then on top of that, if you mix it with that fig jam, fig jam like completely finished the flavor profile out. Very excellent, the cheddar cheese. I also really like that sausage too. That sausage was also excellent. Michelle, I think, um, would agree with me on my choices, at least with the cheese. Michelle says that her the sausage is also her favorite. So the cheese and the sausage off the charcuterie board, definitely our favorites. We're still waiting on the sliders, but the charcuterie board, it is a little small for the price. Michelle was not a little bit uh, upset about the, the size for the price. And I agree with her, 
But you also remember, charcuterie boards are usually like higher end meats and cheeses, so sometimes they, they the price is pushed a little high on the on that for that reason. But at least everything on the charcuterie board was excellent. Continuing our meal here, we have I got myself the Congaloosh ale, and Michelle got herself the High Tower Rocks. And hopefully, it'll come in. And the last time Michelle got this, we always like to joke about it. She got like the biggest slice of watermelon we've ever seen in a cocktail. And we always think it's kind of funny, but that's a tequila. It's got a Casa Dragones tequila, which is one of Michelle's favorites type of tequila. The Congaloosh Ale is a spiced ale exclusive to Disney World. And I really like the Congaloosh Ale and I'm very glad they have it here. You either get this here or at the Jungle Skipper. You used to get it at the SEA Club over in Disney Springs before when it was downtown Disney and you had Pleasure Island. But we're very, so far I will say that the charcuterie board was excellent. It's a little small for the price, but at least the drinks have been excellent and we've appreciated those. So both Michelle and I got the beef sliders with the yucca fries. I like the lattice structure that they did with the yucca fries. It does come with house ketchup. They make this in house. So I think that's a really kind of impressive thing. But both of us have the beef sliders and yucca fries. I think it's a nice small plate meal and I'm looking forward to it. I think Michelle is too, yes? Wow, look at that. Thumbs up. So I would say the sliders, fantastic. Love them. The chipotle aioli is just fantastic. I also like the pickled vegetables that came along with it too on top. The carrots and the pickled carrots and onions, really, really excellent. Uh, the yucca fries, I have to be honest, I was surprised at how much I liked them. They taste like potato french fries, but they have a, they're a little bit stiffer is the best way to describe them. They have a little bit more of a, like a turnip almost in the in the consistency. I liked it. I liked it a lot. And the house made ketchup just complimented the yucca fries excellently. Yeah, these beef sliders, you get two of them and you get the, the pile of yucca fries. Very excellent small plate. The beef is nice and flavorful. The aioli really adds to it. And then you have that zing from the pickled vegetables. Can't, they, they earn the distinction of why they're like infamous for at the Nomad Lab. So I recommend the beef sliders very much. I think Michelle does too. Yeah, she's nodding emphatically. So we're in. We're in for the beef sliders. Great job, Nomad Lounge. By the way, this is what a content wife on vacation looks like. She's definitely enjoying her time here at Nomad Lounge with her high tower rocks and her lounge chair. And for our final addition to our meal, we have the churros with crema and chili strawberry sauces. We have heard nothing but amazing things about these churros. And on top of that, that they're apparently the best churros on property, according to All Ears and Disney Food Block. So let's see if they live up to the hype. So the churros. Yeah, they live up to the hype. Amazing. Michelle flat out said, I'm so glad I didn't have one of the churros in the parks because these would have made them pale in comparison. That's a great way to put it because they were that good. My favorite dipping sauce is the strawberry chili. Now I would tell you, as a heat, I love the heat I, in my food, the spice level was high. I liked it, but it wasn't back of the throat into your like sinus passages heat. It was just kind of there on your tongue heat. The strawberry chili sauce was amazing, amazing. Sweet with that spice that kind of hit you, loved it. Michelle even said she liked it and she doesn't like it that hot. And she said she liked it. She did say the crema was her favorite dipping sauce. But these churros with their cinnamon sugar and crispiness and the texture of them, amazing. I have never had a churro this good at Walt Disney World. That was awesome. That was awesome. Michelle and I have had a phenomenal time here at the Nomad Lounge. It was, we literally just sat here for like the past like couple hours. It's been a couple hours. And we have just enjoyed each other's company and had an amazing afternoon and needed a lazy time. And wow, did this make us feel like we were actually on vacation. Nomad Lounge is perfect for that kind of a feeling. The food was excellent. 
everything was excellent. The drinks were excellent. The service was excellent. Alex, our server, top notch. Thank you, Alex. You've been phenomenal the whole day. Attentive and quick and just awesome. We cannot complain about being able to just have this day where we can sit and enjoy each other and enjoy our food and enjoy our drinks. So Michelle and I decided after our lovely time at Nomad Lounge that we are going to get into the standby line for Flight of Passage, which says 75 minutes. We're gonna get into that line, see how it is. It's cooled off considerably since this morning, and we're gonna see um, how this goes. It's like a little bit before, an hour before the park close. Remember, you can always get into the line up until like the last minute the park's open, no matter how long the wait is, and you can always ride the rides as long as it keeps up and running. Flight of Passage is one of our favorite rides, so we're gonna see how this 75 minute wait is. Considering the fact that we've been basically seeing way less than they predicted for most of the day, I think we're gonna see considerably less than that. I wanna point out something interesting about this line that just occurred to me as I'm standing in it. Disney built a line that climbs a mountain. They could have easily kept it on the ground level, but it climbs a mountain to get in here. Only Disney would do that. You wouldn't see Universal do that. Just saying. You need to make sure that you pay homage to Hank in the tank. That is the nickname that the cast members have given to the avatar in the tank here on Flight of Passage. Hank in the tank is a pretty awesome animatronic. You actually watch, he subtly moves and they do a really good job of kind of making you think that it's a living creature inside that tank. So there you go, Hank in the tank. Soon, you're gonna have a chance to undertake an amazing Navi Rite of Passage, riding on the back of a Banshee by being genetically matched and linked to an avatar. So, I just got off Flight of Passage. We just love that ride, it's a lot of fun. Michelle, like, Michelle, there's a couple moments you have to close your eyes, right? Yeah, I get kind of queasy on some of the drops, but because it's not really a roller coaster. Well, it's not a roller coaster. Um, closing my eyes makes that sinking stomach feeling go away. Because <laughs> you're not actually dropping. Yeah, so there's a little tip for you because it's, all you have to do is close your eyes on that ride and you don't have any problems. Sometimes they tell you not to close your eyes like Mission Space, but yeah. this ride, that ride you're actually moving. This ride, uh, you're not. So all you have to do is close your eyes and the feeling goes away. I, I love that ride though, it's so much fun. Um, big shout out to our cast member, Nawaf. Very friendly, uh, really knew his stuff. Thank you very much for being awesome. Nawaf, if you ever see this video, I hope you do, or someone points you to this video. Thank you for being awesome, dude. And we are, um, the park is officially closed. We literally walked, the, the ride took us, it said 75 minutes when we got in line, it took us 56 minutes to get into the ride and ride it. And we actually had a good row, so uh, you want to request one? D3. Surprisingly good row. The top center, I think, is basically where it was. D3 was the section we were in, and surprisingly good spot. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. Felt the whole, all the effects, because you're in the dead center of the screen, which is always a good way to do it. General, big fans of Flight of Passage, and now we're gonna head back to our hotel, and so, that being said, means that our day here at Animal Kingdom is finished. And as we always like to say, Thanks a lot for watching this video. Hope you've enjoyed our day here in Animal Kingdom. It's kind of a lazy day for us, which we're okay with. And we want to say thank you. Please hit a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. De definitely appreciate you. And because we don't like to say goodbye, because we're going to see you real soon, <laughs> we say, see you bye.